AR and VR is really the mega trends uh, in tech today. Uh, everybody's rushing to it, uh, huge investments are going on. VR, I like to look at VR from the perspective of uh, its uh, 360 format. The 360 format is really what's uh, special about VR. It sets it apart. It used to be that the one behind the camera decides what to watch, what you should watch. It captures something in the surroundings, but that's all changing now with VR. Instead, VR captures everything and it's up to the viewer instead to decide what to watch. It changes from being um, a small part of the, the surrounding to it allows you to transport you there. It's all about the there and then. You are there in a virtual reality. AR, on the other hand, it's all about here and now. You um, allow people to have superpowers. Superpowers in the sense that you provide information about their physical reality around them, which um, is much richer than uh, their senses normally can take in. It's really superpowers. So Joachim, when do you see the breakthrough for VR and AR? It's now. It's, it's really, it's imminent. It's happening right now. There is so much investments going on into this area at the moment. Um, Pokemon Go, this is the game that made AR known to the world. Because Pokemon, Pokemon Go is really an AR game. These Pokemons, as everybody knows, they don't re exist out there in the real world. But Niantic, the company behind it, have augmented the realities with these sort of figures that Pokemon hunters go out to find. Before Christmas, there's probably a hundred clones coming out that are trying to repeat the success of this game that was the most successful game ever. And it's really showed the appetite in the world for, for AR. VR, on, on the other hand, it's, it's, it's also been around for a while, but it's just recently, just recently uh, it has been triggered that the manufacturers and the application developers need to get serious with it now. And what has happened is that Google, they have released an, uh, the latest uh, Android version, Nougat. Uh, it's very VR-oriented. But more importantly, they came with their headset. Daydream View is going to retail for $79, and it's going to allow people to take their mobile phone, bring it in front of their eyes, and uh, experience virtual reality. People will be wearing those uh, virtual reality headsets, and uh, this will be more and more common uh, every day from now on. So what role does Crunchfish play in the um, AR and VR interaction going forward? C Crunchfish is a technology provider. We build components. We build components that manufacturers and application developers use to realize their products. When it comes to um, VR, the role we will play is for interaction. All apps up to now, they have been developed for interaction using touch screens but touch screens will no longer be available with, with virtual reality because literally you have the screen in front of your eyes so it's not accessible anymore so new paradigms for interaction is, is necessary and we believe that gestures will win that game there are other ways uh, you know there are hardware remote controls, you can have controls sitting in the headset, or you can use voice. But they all have drawbacks in terms of cost, convenience, or precision. So I think they will only be uh, peripheral complements to really gesture control. The type of AR, the form of AR we have developed, is something we call connected AR. Because what our, our AR is doing is not only providing information about the physical reality to people, but it's also allowing them to communicate with each other. You, you are really hooked up with everyone and everything around you, and that's extremely powerful. Take, take Pokemon Go, for instance. 
it's an AR game, you know, we have already augmented reality with all these funny Pokemon figures. But with our technology, if Niantic were to take on our technology, what they could do is to allow their Pokemon hunters to find other Pokemon hunters. And our technology, being a connected technology, would allow that exchange to happen. What will happen, you will really take literally two phones, bring them close together, and the Pokemons will jump across from one phone to the other. And uh, this is powerful. Likewise, you know, in a businessman, they don't look for Pokemon hunters, they look for other businessmen. And it, but it's the same sort of thing going on. If, I, if LinkedIn, for instance, would have our technology, they would immediately, in a meeting or in a conference scenario, understand what other businessmen are around them. And they wouldn't exchange Pokemons, obviously, but they would exchange their business cards. So what impact does AR and VR have on Crunchfish potential? We, we, we sit with two technologies. We sit with gesture control that will be crucial for any app which are enabled for VR. But we also have this connected AR that is just as crucial for uh, allowing people to get these superpowers. It will be, it's, it's fantastic uh, of having this position in the market right now. And as the entrepreneur and chairman of the board of Crunchfish, what lies would you say in the future for Crunchfish? Well, the, right now we, we are preparing for, or we are getting ready for the IPO. It's only a few weeks away. Uh, we're excited about it. Uh, we have um, focused this, this story of Crunchfish on one of our technologies, the one which we have developed for the longest time, uh, where we have, we have most market proof points, and that is our gesture control. But I think what, what's going to lie ahead is that people will realize that this little company hasn't just built one technology, we built two. Uh, we have also this connected AR, and uh, both these two technologies will uh, play important roles for this sort of rapidly emerging AR VR industry. Joakim Samuelsson, good luck taking Crunchfish to the next level. Thank you. <laughs>